I think we've all had that girlfriend or boyfriend that wasn't quite right. The one that was supposed to be the one, but wasn't. And in the brutal light of honesty, you knew. Not the easiest to get along with, not the most attractive, not the quickest. But for whatever reasons, you found yourself together. And on a daily basis, it was a struggle, but whatever. You said to yourself, I'll try and make it work. Still, it always felt awkwardly wrong. Then, one time, one glorious moment, it all went right. The way it should be. The way you knew you deserved it to be. But in the morning after, you knew. This changes nothing. And Fernando Alonso knows it too. Even after his Malaysia win and World Championship points lead. For Ferrari, this win changes nothing. And that shakedowners is my Malaysia F1 report. The real punchline? Well, first, the setup. Alonso goes P1 in the piggy Ferrari. Ferrari Driving Academy protege Sergio Perez goes P2 in his Sauber Ferrari, delivering a great audition for his selection for the Ferrari F1 second seat. And Philippe Massa, given a brand new chassis for this race to blunt his complaints about it being the car, not him, well, Massa finishes P15 in Malaysia. Now the punchline. I bet no one's telling Massa this changes nothing. The shirt? We're talking F1 today, but let me explain. I feel a bit like Derek D from Fastlane Daily when I tell you a fan sent me this shirt. It seems the right thing to wear for this F1 show. Alexander Walker has a website, strassenversion.net, and he sells the art and stuff he designs. Has a blog going on and deserves your time to take a visit. The link will be in the description. So there you go. Now Canali and Xenia, if you're watching, my suit closet needs a new roommate. Maybe a gray or a soft brown. My size? Euro 48 short. Okay, two races into the 2012 F1 season, and all we know is that the next weeks before the April 15 China GP are going to be flat out hard work for every team, because no one's yet shown they deserve the championship. Both 2012 races still may not be giving us a true clue as to what's up right now. The Malaysia rain was really deceiving. Just ask Alonso. Or Kimi Raikkonen, who nailed it with his quote, it would be nice to just have a normal weekend and just see where we all are. Right now, nobody really knows where anybody is. We know where Red Bull isn't dominating. Red Bull's fast magic is over. And rather than guess what's not working, I feel our Vettel interview from a year ago gave us the root of what's missing. Here's what Seb said about the need, the need for confidence in the car to go fast. Basically, you need to feel comfortable. Uh -huh. And I think when you feel confident and comfortable, it gives you the trust that you need to go fast and the inspiration, if you want to say it that way, to you know, try new things and push your, yourself to the limit more and more. It's not that the Red Bull RB8 looks nervous. It's just not dialed in yet. The tires aren't working with the car. Nui's making last minute setup changes. Vettel is depending on strategy, not speed, for right now. Red Bull's strength is adaptability. China will be a real indicator for them. McLaren, they have the car. Team strategy calls, pit stops, and driver moves were their Malaysia undoing. Was Button right to change tires first? McLaren pit stops were three and five seconds slower versus Alonso, giving the Ferrari that track position jump ahead on both the silver and red Vodafone cars. And Hamilton, he drives tough on those sensitive Pirellis, using them up. Button admitted it was his mistake with his hit with Carthacaean. But McLaren is in the game, and in my opinion, they gave away Malaysia. Mercedes is all Ross Braun tricked out and has the paddock chasing Charlie Whiting for legality rulings. Is the rear wing W duct legal? Is it helping the front or the rear wings? Hell, I say both. But while the Mercedes shows speed, the package of car, driver, strategy, and execution are not yet complete. The car chews up rear tires, so they give inconsistent pace when the Mercedes is running what appears to be a very compliant rear suspension to compensate. We've all learned that most modern race cars use a very stiff front setting to control roll and a softer rear to maintain traction. But any extreme is a band-aid and at Malaysia, Mike and Nico look to be at the outer edges of normal and the TV broadcast, they even thought they were lifting the inside front tire. They race a Mercedes, right? Not this old BMW. Whatever, Shumi has it right. It's too soon to talk about winning. First, Mercedes-AMG F1 must become the third best team, then move from there. Lotus, they're fast and Kimmy's helping, but not as a 
top three car or team yet. Lotus is biting on the edge of success, but hasn't got it fully done. And like Alonso for Ferrari, Kimi will drag Lotus up to the podiums and placings that it may not fully deserve. Sauber continues to be easy on tires, and that's a good thing in this Pirelli generation of Formula One. Perez and Kobayashi are racers, and that doesn't hurt the cause either. They are the worst nightmare for teams like Force India, Williams, and Caterham, who all want to claim truth to their big step forward statements that they're making for 2012, but can't as long as Sauber is doing the deal. And look closely at the Sauber nose. See that slot venting air from beneath up to the top to smooth airflow? That ain't tier two team stuff. They're really getting their act together. Mercedes and Ferrari should be watching for these guys. Sauber may be taking their place. So shall we talk Ferrari? How the hell did Fernando get P2 practice times out of that thing? With a car that really can't get into Q3 qualifying without him. Still, the Ferrari team was mega fast on the pit stops. They have some trick front tire jack for pit stops that swivels to get the guy out of the way for even faster stops. Ferrari's strategy seems good, but the car is that bitch bastard I opened the show with and needs to be dumped. Even more than Red Bull, everyone's going to be watching what Ferrari does for China. Rumor is that the chassis will be brand new and exorcising that pull rod front suspension from the car. But is that the only issue? I've read everything from no low speed downforce, braking instability, no high speed rear downforce, no balance. Hell, the red paint is probably chipping too. It's a real mess. I said mess, not massa. Okay, what's left? Bruno Senna, Williams and their Renault power are making moves to get into the points. And I don't understand all the catering love from you guys. The team is not any better for 2012. And the rest is just the rest until someone starts to shine. You know, a few shows back, the March 5 shakedown, I gamely put forth my 2012 F1 predictions for race wins. I said nine for Red Bull, five for McLaren, three for Mercedes AMG, and two for Lotus, one for Ferrari. You know, it may be too early to adjust based on these first two races, but my numbers are looking kind of lame. I want to know what you're thinking. And today we talk more about teams than drivers, which reminds me of what Dr. Ulrich head of Audi Sports said in our Sebring interview about picking drivers. Think about his words when you look at the race results and compare lap times because while even Massa got within three tenths of a second on a lap of Alonso, something else, other qualities other than speed factor into what makes a driver a racer. Listen to Dr. Ulrich. Besides their skills and uh, what you can rate with numbers, because that's something we do for sure if we do a driver selection. At the end, you always end up with two or three guys on a nearly identical level. And in most of the cases, if it is not an identical result, stomach decides. And then we have the annual F1 rules fights and controversies. And new Shakedown fan favorite Ulrich Baretsky, head of Audi Engine Development, has his thoughts when he answered my question about if you had the chance to set the rules for racing, what would you do? I always have the word, it's much easier to break rules than to create same, the same. And the, the reason is simple, because in the moment we are sitting and making rules, which we have done several times with colleagues, then you are always in mind to close every loophole. What are the possibilities that would allow you to make it otherwise than I intend the rules should guide you. And this makes it so complicated. And I said, the best thing is to make a, a law book would be to bring all the criminals together and they should say how they should be written because they know it best how to break it, that they should know it best how to avoid that laws are broken or what should be done people to keep to prevent them from doing it. Ah, Mr. Boretsky, in F1, we already have the criminals running the roost. And I'm not talking all the new Concord Agreement rabble-rousing from Bernie. You could Google that topic on your own without me. And I'm not going after the Sauber tells Perez not to pass Ferrari controversy. Because to me, Sergio's a racer, and he really wanted P1.